Good morning. I'm Scott Montgomery. I'm a milk hauler for Kick Milk Hauling. And we're at the farm for our first stop. And first thing we have to do is fill out the paperwork and then we can go into the milk house and start pumping milk. This is the part of the paperwork. There's all kinds of different things to fill out on this. Uh, we are part of the Department of Agriculture and this is the second step to getting your milk from the cows then we haul it to the processing plant they bottle it and then they send it to you we have little cheat sheets that we use for different routes that we go on we haul three different routes every day Monday through Sunday we work seven days a week 70 hours a week some days are longer than others some days we get done early some days we're out till late in the morning picking up milk and delivering it to the processing plants Today's load number is load number 12. The route number is 0393. That just happens to be the route that the Department of Agriculture designated for this particular route. Today's the last day of February. I have to write that on my paperwork as the pickup date and the delivery date is the same because I will make it to the dairy tonight. And the dairy is, the, when I refer to the dairy, that is the processing plant. Today's load is actually going to Ryder down in Springfield, Ryder Dairy down in Springfield on Commerce Circle. Um, unfortunately, they do not allow uh, multimedia visuals in the plant so we probably will not be able to show you that uh, all milk collars are supposed to carry a non-delible red marker to write on the top of these sample bottles blue designates dairy farmers of america yellow bottle is a sample bottle we also put our tickets in these at the end of the day Yellow stands for Dairy Marketing Services, and the green stands for National Farmers Organization, or NFO. Today, at the first stop, we are going to use the yellow bottle for temperature control, one for the, the ticket at the end of the day, and a blue one for the first stop because he is a Dairy Farmers of America member. temperature control we just put the initials TC for temperature control my initials because I am a licensed wear sampler tester the producers number which this one happens to be 306 154 today's date 228.15 the time we're getting started very late today Normally we're starting about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning at the farm, but today it's 10 o'clock. And the temperature, which we will have to get inside the producer's milk house on his digital thermometer. And we also carry a thermometer with us to double check and make sure that his thermometer is accurate. On the ticket bottle, we just write ticket. Today's date, and 0393, which is the route number. Ready? Yep. 
farm has stickers. One goes on the paperwork that states their producer number. Then we have two more stickers. They both go on the bottle. It states the date, the time, and the temperature. Over here is the digital thermometer. It states that the milk is at 37 degrees. transfer that 37 degrees onto the stickers then we take one sticker and put on the top of the bottle and it has a barcode that they read at the dairy and they test for antibiotics bacteria and all that of the sorts and then one goes down here on the side set that off to the side now I have to wash my hands for cleanliness, make sure I get the bacteria and stuff off my hands. The farmers leave soap in here for us to use. Dry your hands. Find the trash can. Now we take paper towels over. This particular farmer left a sample of a cow in this bag with paperwork. And we will send this to the, I take this to the dairy and we send this to the lab. And then they will check either for pregnancy, which this happens to be antibiotic tests on each individual cow before they can put them into the tank. The blood samples are to just test for pregnancy. So we'll set this off on the side and put this in our cooler before we leave. Now we can open the top of the tank. You have to take this band off. You have to take this rubber stopper off. This is your gradation stick. How we measure the milk. And you open the lid. This one, this particular lid slides to the side and sits there. Wipe the stick off a couple times. And these sticks are very hard to read at times. Put it back down in there. The milk is, is settled. There's no, it's not sloshing around or anything. And we read the stick. This particular stick is reading 81 over 3. The next step is to come over here to their control box and turn the agitator on. The agitator is now turning the milk, and we have to wait five minutes before we can take a sample to stir up the milk and make sure that all the butter fat and everything in the milk gets turned up before we take a sample for antibiotics. Now we're going, while we're waiting on that five minutes, we're going to open the back of the trailer. And these particular trailers, we were one of the very few milk haulers that have these. We have a gas motor because we pump on Amish farms and they have no electricity at the Amish farm. We also have an electric motor in here. Today we're not picking up any Amish, so we're going to use all electric today. We can also use this for a backup in case the farmer's electric does go out or we have power failures. This here is a switch that we have to turn off when we decide to use the gas motors and it cuts the electricity off and we have to put this belt on, on this pulley to the gas motor to make the gas motor work. This particular farm has full time power at their plug over here at the milk house so I cannot plug the plug in until I'm ready to pump milk. So I lay this off to the side until I'm ready. We uncoil the hose. This is the milk port or the hose port that we put in 
all farms have this that produce milk so we can put the hose through the wall and save on their energy that they have built up in the building as far as heat. Because it's cold out, I have to turn this pump over to make sure it's not frozen by grabbing this pulley and twisting it a few times. You make sure all your connections are tight, which I tightened them at the dairy last night before I left so I didn't have to do it today. This is the sample tube. It, is a, uh, it has a dipper in it because it's cold and I left the solution in here overnight, it froze. So now we have to go in and thaw this out under hot water. into the outlet, you see the milk go through the hose. make sure there's nothing in there that's hot water that's fresh so there's no chance of bacteria grab my sample bottles make sure I have my temperature control and my sample bottle carefully climb up the ladder and we always rinse the dipper out with milk two to three times to get the sanitized fluid out of there and then we take two samples two dips of milk and put in the sample bottle that's for the temperature control I already checked the temperature via the digital thermometer and my thermometer and they both correlate and then I take two more dips and put them in the sample that goes in to get checked for antibiotics and bacteria Get the excess milk off of the dipper. Then 
They have a re water recycling program here at this farm, so I'll leave the hot water in this bucket. It's kind of chilly in here, but it's not so cold that that will freeze. I rinse the zipper with hot water again. Get the milk and all the bacteria off of it so we can go to the next farm. I put that back in the dipper tube. Now we will take this stuff while the milk is pumping. We will take this stuff to the truck and put it in a cooler. trucks have containers underneath, some containers are in the back, we have a cooler, and we have what we call a floater, we put the ticket bottle in here so we can put the ticket with the milk later, your temperature control, and then you have your sample bottle. Put it in the ice, even though it's cold enough outside to keep everything cool, at a certain temperature to keep the bacteria down. So make sure that's locked before we go down the road. If you remember, I told you 81 over 3 was the stick reading. We have a chart up here that converts that 81 over 3. You go over here. You got 81, and you move down to 3, that's 7135, that's 7,135 pounds of milk out of this one farm. So then we transfer it to the farm card, or the producer milk shipment record. 7,135. We also put the stick reading on there, 81 over 3. The temperature was 37. The time we got here was 10 o'clock a.m. And my initials. And as you can tell, my cup, my boss's name is on here, and my name is on here as well as the driver. If we do not have this on here, they do periodic inspections. If our names and our license number from the Department of Agriculture, which I'll show you here shortly, is not on here these guys will get a mark on their inspection and they will get points docked for us not signing their cards. So then we go to our paperwork that we turn in at the dairy. Over here we put the weight which was 71, 35, the time which we use military time on our paperwork on the farmers uh, farm card we just use regular time and I will explain that later the temperature was 37 and the stick reading was 81 over 3 down at the bottom I have to put my license number which is 3215 a permit number for my for the hauling company is 46100 and then the Ohio Department of Agriculture seal number which this particular trailer is 0465. I cannot sign this piece of paper until I'm done with my whole route. If the inspector comes out and I have signed this paperwork, then I have to run the route all over again because that is their rules and regulations that I have to abide by as a milk caller. And I will show you my license. And that is, has my license number, my address, that shows that I'm a weigher, sampler, and tester of bulk milk. And as also I have to carry a CDL driver's license, which this is a commercial driver's license. Doesn't have the correct address on it, but it, my correct address is on file at the Department of Motor Vehicle Safety. Now we have to wait on the milk to finish pumping out of the tank and then we will close everything up and go to the next farm. Yeah. On the control box, while we're waiting on the milk to finish pumping, 
we have to put sanitized soap in the big container. That's just water that I dumped on the ground. We come over here, and as you see, it says highly concentrated CIP cleaner. If you go down here, it says corrosive. This stuff will eat your skin if you get it on you, so you have to be very careful. We fill these things half full. The rest gets filled with water to dilute the solution. We take it back over to the control box, which is controls the washer and the, helps agitate the milk when it gets to a certain temperature and it helps cool it. Then we have water valves we have to turn off because the farmers leave them on. And this one is a cleaning acid. Again, this is just water that I'm dumping on the floor that's left over from when we washed the tank yesterday. This is acid, it's very corrosive. If left on your skin, it will eat a hole all the way through you. Again, we fill these halfway. Screw these back on here. And then you make sure the water is turned back on. Make sure that this is in the off position so it does not cool the tank while it's washing or you will wind up with a tank full of ice. That is what the inside of the tank looks like. What you're looking at is the agitator that stirs the milk. The milk is almost completely gone out of the tank. And we will wash the tank, rewash the tank here shortly. As soon as the milk gets out, we will put our hose and electric cord back in the trailer. And we'll put the washer in the tank. And we will leave and go to the next farm. you put your stuff in and we put under the washer that, that way it gets rinsed as the tanks get it clean. You find the garden hose sometimes the farmers leave it out for us sometimes we have to go back in the milk where they, they milk the cows and get the hose. This particular farm has a jet pump that helps provide extra pressure for the water so we can rinse the tank. Rinsing the excess milk down so it gives it a better clean, kind of like rinsing the dishes off before you put them in the dishwasher. Only this is a lot bigger dish than most of you deal with. We also have to spray the agitator off because it gets bacteria and stuff on it. Make sure it gets clean. And also spray the lid, bottom of the lid off. To get any extra milk residue off there. And we make sure that the lid is closed. Put your rubber gasket back on. Your band. To keep it sealed. Spray the floor down. Keep the milk. For people stepping in milk or slipping and falling. Turn the pump off. Now you can put your washer in. Now that the washer is in, you come over to your control box. 
make sure it's in the wash position and then you turn this knob to the right until you hear the water start flowing and now we're ready to leave we've got to go out and get the electric cord and the hose put in the trailer before we can back the truck up So we kind of have to force it. Now we're ready to go on to the next point. Waiting on that five minutes, we're going to open the back of the trailer. And these particular trailers, we were one of the very few mill callers that have these. We have a gas motor because we pump on Amish farms and they have no electricity at the Amish farm. We also have an electric motor in here. Today we're not picking up any Amish so we're going to use all electric today. We can also use this for a backup in case the farmer's electric does go out or we have power failures. This here is a switch that we have to turn off when we decide to use the gas motors and it cuts the electricity off and we have to put this belt on, on this pulley to the gas motor to make the gas motor work. This particular farm has full time power at their plug over here at the milk house so I cannot plug the plug in until I'm ready to pump milk. So I lay this off to the side until I'm ready. And we uncoil the hose. This is the milk port, or the hose port, that we put in. All farms have this that produce milk, so we can put the hose through the wall and save on their energy that they have built up in the building as far as heat. Because it's cold out, I have to turn this pump over to make sure it's not frozen by grabbing this pulley and twisting it a few times. You make sure all your connections are tight, which I tightened them at the dairy last night before I left so I didn't have to do it today. This is the sample tube. It, is, uh, it has a dipper in it. Because it's cold and I left the solution in here overnight, it froze. So now we have to go in and thaw this out under hot water. and use the farmer's bucket and fill it with hot water. And I'm going to stick my dipper tube down in here. Sometimes we leave the, the sanitized fluid that's in here. Sometimes we leave that out and the farmers are kind enough. They provide us with Clorox and we use their water and then we fill it the first stop. on that. I'll take my hose over here, unscrew the safety cap from the bottom of the tank where the valve is, and hook my hose in. Turn this valve to open the bottom of the bulb tank. Put your kid in one there. 
when I plug this plug into the outlet, you see the milk go through the hose. make sure there's nothing in there that's hot water that's fresh so that there's no chance of bacteria grab my sample bottles make sure I have my temperature control and my sample bottle carefully climb up the ladder and we always rinse the dipper out with milk two to three times to get the sanitized fluid out of there and then we take two samples two dips of milk and put in the sample bottle that's for the temperature control I already checked the temperature via the digital thermometer and my thermometer and they both correlate and then I take two more dips and put them in the sample that goes in to get checked for antibiotics and bacteria Get the excess milk off of the dipper. They have a re water recycling program here at this farm, so I'll leave the hot water in this bucket. It's kind of chilly in here, but it's not so cold that that will freeze. I rinse the dipper with hot water again. Get the milk and all the bacteria off of it so we can go to the next farm I put that back in the dipper tube now we will take this stuff while the milk is pumping we will take this stuff to the truck and put it in the cooler dipper tube back on some trucks have containers underneath, some containers are in the back. We have a cooler, we have what we call a floater. We put the ticket bottle in here so we can put the ticket with the milk later. Your temperature control, and then you have your sample bottle. Put it in the ice, even though it's cold enough outside to keep everything cool. We have to keep it at a certain temperature to keep the bacteria down. And we make sure that's locked before we go down the road. If you remember, I told you 81 over 3 was the stick reading. We have a chart up here that converts that 81 over 3. You go over here. You got 81, you move down to 3, that's 7135, that's 7,135 pounds of milk out of this one farm. So then we transfer it to the farm card, or the producer milk shipment record. 7,135. We also put the stick reading on there, 81 over 3. The temperature is 37. The time we got here was 10 o'clock a.m. And my initials. And as you can tell, my, my boss's name is on here. 
and my name is on here as well as the driver. If we do not have this on here, they do periodic inspections. If our names and our license number from the Department of Agriculture, which I'll show you here shortly, is not on here, these guys will get a mark on their inspection and they will get points docked for us not signing their cards. So then we go to our paperwork that we turn in at the dairy. Over here we put the weight which was 71, 35, the time, which we use military time on our paperwork on the farmer's uh, farm card. We just use regular time and I will explain that later. The temperature was 37 and the stick reading was 81 over 3. Down at the bottom, I have to put my license number, which is 3215. A permit number for my for the hauling company is 46100. And then the Ohio Department of Agricultural seal number, which this particular trailer is 0465. I cannot sign this piece of paper until I'm done with my whole route. If the inspector comes out and I have signed this paperwork, then I have to run the route all over again because that is their rules and regulations that I have to abide by as a milk hauler. And I will show you my license. And that is, it has my license number, my address. It shows that I'm a weigher, sampler, and tester of bulk milk. And as also I have to carry a CDL driver's license which this is a commercial driver's license. Doesn't have the correct address on it, but it my correct address is on file at the Department of Motor Vehicle Safety. Now we have to wait on the milk to finish pumping out of the tank. And then we will close everything up and go to the next farm. All right, we're at a different farm. This is a sight gauge. Instead of having the meter stick, you have a sight gauge and it has the increments on it. And you basically read it the same way as a stick, it's just a different way. Uh, this is a lot bigger tank. And we're looking at 134 over 2. And it connects in down here at the uh, outlet for the bulk tank. And if you go to your chart here, 134 over 2 is 21,252 pounds of milk. We've made it to the last stop and we will uh, show you how to finalize the load for today before we go to the dairy. Milk's pumping. I'm just tallying up the total for today. So when I get to the dairy, they know how much the total weight is that I have in my truck and how many gallons are going to receive. A gallon of milk approximately weighs 8.6 pounds. That's one gallon of milk for 8.6 pounds. We have 58,451 pounds today that we picked up in nine stops. I write that down here at the bottom where it says weight total. And now I can sign the paperwork because this is the end of my route and I go straight from here to the dairy. I'm approximately two hours away from the dairy. is the hauler copy. I retain that for my records and the boss's records. The pink copy is the lab copy. It gets turned in and the ticket bottle with the milk samples at the dairy while I'm unloading. The milk is pumped off. I had to turn the main switch off. 
There is a fax copy on the top that the, the, the lab gets. And there is also a handler copy that the dairy keeps. That completes the four copies. And I will be talking to you soon. This sensation tag that I got yesterday when I was at the dairy states the time that it was, the tank was cleaned, the time that it was sanitized, and on the back num back side of the tag there's three seal numbers. Two are on the very top of the trailer and the manhole cover and the vent, and then one is on the back, which I have in my hand, and these numbers have to correspond with the numbers on the seals. I'll turn this over so you can read it. And you have the same number up here. So now we'll seal the trailer so we can prepare to go to the dairy. Maybe. With it being cold outside, sometimes these things don't always want to work. Push that valve in and screw it shut. And that seals the trailer from any milk being able to come out in case of a rollover. My folder goes up front with me because I have to hand the receiver my paperwork prior to getting unloaded. This trailer has two doors. Because this is the motor compartment, I only have to seal this one side. Now we're ready to go to the dairy. Rolling into Ryder Dairy down in Springfield, Ohio. We have to pull onto the scales here so we can weigh in. And then we'll weigh out when we leave. That gives them uh, actual on how much milk we have in the tank delivered to them. Get here on the scale, we have to wait for the milk to settle. And then over here on my left side, we have a traffic light and they'll flash it green when I'm ready, when I'm good to go. the bay. They open the door for me, which means that there's an open bay. And I can back right in. That way we can start pumping the milk off and then wash the trailer and then I can go home. It is uh, 6.30 at night and it's very unusual that uh, I get in like this, but uh, I'm, I'm going to take advantage of it and try to go home and enjoy some time with the family. We backed in and unhooked our trucks to, to save the heat in the building. And we pull the trucks outside and leave the trailers inside. Now we'll walk to the back of the trailer and I'll give you a uh, brief overview of what we do. We got special permission to uh, videotape this. That is the vent on the top of the trailer that has to be open if that does not open the trailer will collapse uh, when we're pumping the milk off due to the suction here we are at the back of the trailer uh, we disconnected the pump, uh, tore it all apart, and it gets washed with a sanitizing soap solution. Uh, the black thing is called the vein. Uh, that's what propels the milk. It's just like a uh, water wheel. Uh, it propels the milk into the trailer, and 
the bypass hose there uh, that takes it from the pump to the trailer. Then we connect this four inch hose, which goes over to a pump over here, which pumps the milk into the big silos, which are outside. It's too dark to show you that. Uh, but this other pump right here is what we wash the trailer with. Uh, and after the trailer's uh, washed, they wash with hot and cold water. Uh, they they sanitize it, and then they air blow the lines. And they have three three pumps here, two sets of pumps. The middle pump is to pump cream on and off of trailers. Uh, that's a separate product. And this place is filled with. Uh, lines run in every which direction it's like a maze uh, up above you have a catwalk uh, that's where the receiver uh, they're dressed in all white they wear hair nets and beard nets to for sanitary purposes that is a safety for them to be able to walk over top of the trailers and uh, put the washers in as well as to open a top vent uh, so the trailers do not collapse and they also take a milk sample while they're up there Sanitary loop to put the thing back together, put the pump back together. That way, everything's sanitary, but it also stays lubricated. Spray the inside of the pump. The jewelry has to stay on there to seal it. Spray the outside of the veins. If this is not well lubricated, this rubber piece will burn up, and then you wind up with these rubber chunks in your milk.